Hello everyone. Today I'm going to, this is Mr. Pell, first of all, and today I'm going to introduce you to trigonometry. That is really exciting. You're going to learn your first piece of trig today. Um, so trigonometry is really just looking at right triangles and ratios in right triangles, which doesn't sound that interesting, but it actually applies to a lot of really cool real world problems that we will learn how to solve, like figuring out how tall a building or a tree is, and all sorts of really cool stuff. Um, so let's get started, because I know you're fired up for this. It's really cool stuff. Um, so to start, let's just sort of look at a generic right triangle. Okay, and just go ahead and pause and draw one that looks kind of like mine. Uh, and, and we've used this language here. You know what a hypotenuse is. Um, so I'm going to call the hypotenuse little c. Uh, whoops, let's try that again. We'll call that little c and the leg. Uh, and, and so I'm going to call this one a. You could call it bc, but I'm going to call it just a. And I'm going to call this one little b. Okay. Um, and I want to make sure you're really clear about all of this vocab over here. Okay. Um, so the hypotenuse, hopefully you know the hypotenuse is the, is the side that's opposite the right angle. So if I'm sitting in this corner looking out, that's c. Right? That's the hypotenuse. When I say the leg that's opposite angle A, so again, if I'm sitting in this corner, if the triangle is a room, the leg that's opposite angle A would be this one over here, so that's A, okay. uh, or, or BC, if we're naming it that way. The leg that's adjacent to angle A, that word adjacent means next to, but I'm saying the leg that's adjacent to angle A, so I'm not talking about the hypotenuse, I'm talking about the leg that's adjacent to it, and that's B in this case. Okay. The leg opposite angle B, so now if I'm over here at angle B, the leg that's opposite that, that's over there, that's B. And the leg that's adjacent to angle B, again, it's the adjacent leg to a B, that's, so it's not the hypotenuse, it's this leg, so that would be A. So that vocabulary of adjacent and, hypot and opposite versus hypotenuse can be really important for trait. Okay. So let's learn your first little piece of trig. The first ratio we're going to look at, tri trigonometry is really just ratios in right triangles. Uh, we've been studying similar triangles. It just ties right into that. So the first one is the tangent ratio. And you've probably seen the tan button on your scientific calculator on your grapher. And that's what it means. It's just short for tangent. And the tangent ratio is defined as the ratio of the opposite leg to the adjacent leg in a right triangle. So if the angle is theta, and theta is a pretty commonly used variable, you could use x or y, um, but theta is a Greek letter and it's often used to represent angles, especially in trigonometry. So the tangent is just the ratio of the opposite leg to the adjacent leg. So for example, we've been studying 45 degree angles, 45, 45, 90 right triangles, I should say. Okay. Um, so if this was a 45, 45, 90, and let's, I'm just going to make up some numbers here. Let's say this was 5 and this was 5. Then I could say that the tangent, I could write a trig equation, and this is something we're going to do a lot of in the next week or two. The tangent of 45 degrees is defined to be the ratio of the opposite leg. So what's the opposite leg? That's this one here. That's 5 over the adjacent leg. And in this case, the adjacent leg is also 5. So what is the tangent of 45 degrees equal? Well, it actually, in this case, equals 1, a nice friendly number. Um, but what happens if we deal with some not-so-friendly numbers? So let's just make up a different number. Let's just say this was the tangent of 27 degrees. Okay, so the tangent of 27 degrees and I wanted to know what that equaled. Well, uh, you're going to use your calculator. And so I'm going to bring up the calculator here so you can see what this looks like. Um, and this is the Windows calculator, but your, your Mac, if you're using a Mac at home like I do, the, the calculator that comes with it also has a scientific mode. So you may need to turn that on. So I'm going to go to the View and turn on Scientific. And you'll notice you have a tangent button right here. So if I wanted to find the tangent of 45 degrees, um, notice I'm in degree mode here. Make sure you're not in radians or gradients. Uh, I'm going to put 45 and then press tangent. And it's, it's 1. 
right? And I, I picked that one because it was one we could figure out pretty easily. Um, okay. But let's say we wanted to find something like the tangent of 27 degrees. Right? Well, I don't know what that ratio is, and you're just going to use your calculator to figure that out. I would put 27 in tangent and see that it's about 0 0.50952, blah, 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 blah. It goes on and on forever. Um, and we'll learn how to use that in just a little bit. Okay. All right. So that's the tangent ratio. Um, so you ought to be able to use your calculator to, to figure things like that out. Uh, so the tangent of 15 degrees, if you wanted to figure that out, you just put 15 and press tangent, and there you go. And in this one, I asked to round it to the nearest hundredth. So you would round 0.267 to the nearest hundredth, which would be 0.27. So the tangent of 15 degrees is 0.27. Okay, tangent of 45, we just did that one. I kind of jumped the gun, that's one. And we could do tangent of 64, but I'm going to skip that. Because I want you to see how we can use this. So let's look at an example. So here is a right triangle. I should label that. Um, and I know an angle, and I know one of, the, one of the legs, but I don't know the other one. So I'm going to write a trig equation to help me solve this. Okay, I'm going to write a trig equation to help me solve this. So I'm focused on this angle. Okay, so I'm going to use the tangent ratio. So the tangent of 75 degrees should be equal to the opposite over the adjacent. Remember, that's what tangent is. That's what it's defined to be. So what is the opposite leg? What's the leg opposite 75? That's the x. And what's the leg adjacent to 75? Well, that's 3. So the tangent of 75 should be equal to x over 3. To solve this, I need to know what the tangent of 75 is. Um, well, first, let me get x by itself. So I'm just going to solve this the way you would solve any equation. I'm going to multiply both sides by 3. And so I see that x is equal to 3 times the tangent of 75 degrees. So I get my calculator. I put in 75, whoops, let's try that again, 75, I find the tangent, and then I'm going to multiply that by 3. So I'm going to do that times 3, and there we go. And I see that it's about 11.1961 blah 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 blah. It said to the nearest hundredth, so I'm going to round that to 11.196, so that goes up to 11.20. And so I see that x is equal to 11.20. I really should say x is approximately equal to, but since it's said around, it's okay to say equals. And so you see that you can use trigonometry to find the missing value in a right triangle um, because we know all those ratios. Your calculator has all those ratios sort of built into them. Okay. Um, so I'm going to, well, let's look at one more example. So here's another one. I'm going to write a trig equation to help me solve this. Okay, so I see now here my angle is this one, 28. So I'm going to say the tangent of 28 degrees is equal to the opposite over the adjacent. So the opposite leg in this case is the 12. And the adjacent leg is the one next to it. Again, not the hypotenuse, but the adjacent leg, which is x. Now I want to solve this equation for x. Um, and so the easiest way to do that, I think, is just to put that over 1, cross multiply. So x times tangent of 28. So x times the tangent of 28 should equal 1 times 12. And then divide both sides by the tangent of 28. Right, so that's just a number, so it works the same way as canceling anything else does. And so now I'm just going to do 12 divided by the tangent of 28 and put that into my calculator. Uh, so let's see what that looks like. Okay, So 12 divided by the tangent of 28. And on your scientific calculator, this can be a little bit tricky, so I'll show you how to do it. So we're going to do 12 divided by... Now to do tangent of 28, I have to do 28 and then press tangent. And so you see it's 12 divided by tangent of 28, and that equals, and it's about 22.57 if I'm rounding. 
32.57. Okay, and that is your tangent, whoops, your tangent ratio. Okay, now you might be wondering, whoops, I jumped the gun there. What happens if you're interested in the hypotenuse instead of just the two legs? Well, we have more ratios. The next one is the sine ratio, and you've seen this abbreviation here probably, S-I-N, and probably said sin, and my really corny math joke is it is a sin to say sin in geometry and trigonometry as well. Um, that's sine, so please read that sine, not sin. And the sine ratio is simply the ratio of the opposite leg to the hypotenuse. So the opposite leg, which is this one, to the hypotenuse, which is this one. Okay, and that's also on your calculator. And then there's another one, which is the cosine ratio. It's not cos or cos. You read that cosine. It's just short for cosine. And that's equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse. Um, and those are three ratios that you're going to need to know. We'll talk about that in a minute. So, again, you can use your calculator here to find any of those values. We don't have to necessarily do all of those right now. But if I want to find the sine of 45 degrees, I just do 45 and press the sine button. And there it is. There's the sine of 45 degrees. It's about 0 0.707. Um, I can find the sine of 82 degrees. There's 82, and I press sine. And you see you can just use your calculator to evaluate those. Okay. And I can do the same thing with cosine, but I think that's hopefully pretty self-explanatory, but you might want to practice with a calculator. Okay, so let's see now. How am I supposed to remember all those ratios? Are you kidding me, Mr. Appel? Seriously, sine, cosine, tangent, sin, cos, tan, what is all this craziness? Well, of course, there's a really easy way to help you remember those three ratios, which will help you to figure out which one you should use when solving a problem. And you may have heard people say this when they say trigonometry. They say, Sokatoa. Okay, they don't say it that creepy, but it's Sokatoa. Um, I just like saying it creepy because it sounds kind of cool. Sokatoa. Uh, what on earth is Sokatoa? Well, Sokatoa. I say it that way so that you remember So is S O H, and Ka is C A H, and Toa is, well, Toa. Um, but this is actually a really useful little mnemonic, uh, and it basically is going to help you with your three ratios. If you haven't figured it out already, it's sine is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. Cosine is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse. And tangent is equal to the opposite over the adjacent. And so it's just a nice way to help you remember those three trig ratios, which will help you to solve all sorts of interesting problems that we'll start to look at in class. All right, I hope you enjoyed this introduction to trigonometry. Good night.